everyone. Happy New Year. A big shout out to viewer XTD who suggested today's video on the famous and historic San Francisco cable cars. And since January 17th is National Cable Car Day, bet you guys didn't know that, today is my ode to the city's cable car system. While the number one most iconic landmark in San Francisco is the Golden Gate Bridge, I'd have to say the cable car system comes in a pretty close second. This was actually the first successful cable car system ever built, and it was invented by Andrew Smith Halliday in 1873, who critically patented steel gauge cables, which is what really makes the whole system work. So I found this historic tidbit totally fascinating, but prior to the cable car, there wasn't really a good way to get up and down the steep SF hills. There were passenger cars or wagons that were drawn by horses who more often than not could not make it up the roads and were sometimes dragged to their deaths when the heavy wagons plummeted down halfway up. With technology and everything, the modern trolley or rail car has upgraded to electric and the San Francisco cable car system is the only historical one of its kind. It came close to getting shut down in the 50s because it was old and extremely expensive to operate. But several prominent women's civic groups fought city council to keep it open. Yay, women power. Technically, this is part of the city's Muni public transit system, and so you can purchase tickets at any of these Muni ticketing stations. Or if you have exact cash, you can buy it on board. Personally, I find it easiest to use the Muni mobile smartphone app, which allows you to purchase the fares online and in advance. And if you have one of the unlimited day passes, it's included. The $7 fare is definitely more expensive than riding the bus or any of the other Muni rails, mainly due to the cost of operating a more old-fashioned system. But it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience and definitely worth doing. There are three lines you can ride. Two of them leave here from the Powell Station turntable near Union Square. The popular Powell Hyde Line, which cuts through Union Square, Chinatown, parts of Knob Hill, Russian Hill, and terminates in Fisherman's Wharf. The Powell Mason Line, which services Chinatown and North Beach. And finally, the California Street Line goes east-west, starting at Van Ness in Knob Hill and ending at Davis in the Financial District. I'm going to ride the north-south lines today, so I am going to catch the cable cars at the Powell Station Turnaround, which is probably the most popular place to catch these. These cars are pulled by a cable that only runs in one direction, and so they have to be manually turned around. And that's what these turntables are for. There are turntables located at the end of each of these lines. car has a conductor who checks tickets and makes sure passengers aren't getting unruly in the back. I know you tourists are party people. And the grip man who drives. The cable cars are pretty simple to operate and have four main controls. The grip, a long handle on the left which clamps on and off the street cable. This is what makes the cars go. Wheel brakes, which operate like pedal brakes on a modern car. And track brakes, the lever on the right which jams huge wooden blocks against the track when it's pulled. Kind of like a manual brake. There's also a red emergency brake that works like the track brake, but is made of a huge block of steel and can only be removed by a welding torch. Going downhill, gravity takes over and there's no need for the cable to pull, so the grip is detached. What I love about this line is that it passes the central powerhouse and car barn where the cable operations actually happen and you can get off and check it out for free. Check it out, so cool. Each cable has its own gearbox and a 510 horsepower engine that makes a turn. At one point, it used to be steam power. Connected to the gearbox are six sheaves, which are these huge wheels. There are four down here and two up there. The cable is wrapped around them in a figure eight pattern to prevent them from slipping off. This here is the cable for Hyde Street, the 
the cable for California Street, the cable for Mason Street, and the cable for Powell. In the back of the power station is a cute little museum with exhibits that go into the history of San Francisco's cable car system and also details exactly how these cable car works for those mechanical geeks out there. I'm a bit of a mechanical geek and I find it super fascinating. Here's the pad of the brake shoe and this is the one attached to the pedal. You can see down here this one is unused and this one has been worn through. Here is the grip. When you pull the handle back like this, it has been fully released and forward is it's fully gripped. You can kind of see in here the grip itself. Perched above the powerhouse is one of several car barns where the cable cars are stored overnight or when they're not in use and also where they're serviced by one of the many mechanics that are on the payroll. And these cable cars have to be maintained quite frequently as the grips have to be replaced about every three days and the track brake blocks even more frequently than that. There are a total of 39 cars in the entire system, some of which are antiques like number 28, which goes as far back as 1888, and some are brand spanking new. When you're done turning the powerhouse, you can take the cable cars either back to Union Square or continue down the line to Fisherman's Wharf. I am gonna continue down Hyde and get me some Uridelli Sunday. It's my treat today at the end of this rainbow. Stay dry and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.